Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Vinod Kumar uh, from technical team of Hilti. Uh, Hilti is into fastening and demolition segment. And here we go. Uh, I, uh, we, are, we welcome you all for the session. The, uh, the agenda goes like this. Introduction to Hilti group and Hilti solution that we could offer in India, uh, namely measuring and positioning systems, drilling and demolition uh, and cutting systems, fastening systems, post installation of uh, rebarring, uh, installation systems and fire stop. So out of these, uh, we are going to discuss only on fastening system and post installation uh, of the rebar connection. And of course, we are going to speak about technical support that we can offer you. To speak about the profile of our company, uh, it's a, uh, ILT is a global uh, organization. We have a plant across the, across the globe. And uh, it was founded in the, uh, in the year 19, 1941 in the place called Shan. Shan is in between Switzerland, uh, Germany, and Austria. It's a small town uh, comprising of more than uh, less, uh, somewhere around 50,000 employees. And, and we have more than uh, 20,000 employees across the uh, across the globe. Our CEO is Mr. B uh, Boris Berg and chairman is um, Mr. Bashira. And our brand promises outperform, outlast. And this is our uh, 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 generation uh, thing. It started in the year to 1941 until uh, 2011. Uh, we have different. We have launched a different uh, products and we have. Uh, 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 stepped into different platforms and we are we are keep on going growing as such and Hilti India is started in uh, 1997. This shows the uh, production network uh, uh, what we have across the uh, across the globe. Uh, for India, the nearest to, uh, um, nearest to, uh, go down would be from Singapore. From Singapore is the nearest manufacturing unit for India and from there we import the material uh, and we from from there we supply from uh, Bang uh, Bombay and uh, Delhi. And Hilti solution that we could offer in India. Hilti India is headquartered at New Delhi, and uh, we have uh, 275 odd uh, employees in India, and uh, more than uh, 25 service centers available. And we have a, a, a look, network across the completely across the globe, across the country. And this is the uh, Hilti team uh, uh, taken in a team conference 2011. And we have a separate technical team in uh, uh, Pan India basis serving uh, um, serving all technical queries on, on our anchor fastness and rebarring. And our system solutions is, uh, uh, will go like this. Laser technologies, in, um, laser, laser power tools in form of measuring and uh, uh, measuring align, aligning equipment and drilling machines, drilling machine in form of drilling and uh, demolition tools. And again, uh, for cutting, concrete cutting and other thing. Fastening technologies, of course, we have mechanical, uh, mechanical and chemical anchors and of course, plastic anchors. And modular channel supports uh, for installation systems, which will be a replacement of building, and fire stop system to avoid uh, uh, to uh, to stop the fire spread from the spread inside inside the building. Let's go ahead with the fasting system. First, uh, we have um, for for the fasting system we have this tool uh, called the Profis uh, software, which will design the uh, anchor fastness and which will indicate the minimum edge distance and minimum spacing between the anchors and all, which is uh, which is safe for installations. Uh, and we also have a FTM that is a fasting technology manual wherein where, where a structural consultant can refer the manual and recommend the anchor directly for his uh, requirement. So uh, the design concept goes like this. We, normally anchor will have, will, has to, will have to take uh, tension and shear. Tension will be, um, tension will be a uh, component of steel uh, and the concrete. It, uh, steel may fail and concrete may fail. Whereas shear again it is in terms of steel it may fail due to steel and it may fail due to concrete. Uh, again, in case of concrete tension, there are uh, three failures: co uh, concrete pull, uh, concrete cone, pull out, and uh, splitting. And which, whichever is smaller will be recommended. Again, in case of uh, steel, there are two failures: one is bending, another is uh, pure shear. In case of concrete uh, shear, edge failure and pry out. And among the among all these uh, four failures, which will which will be the smallest, will be taken into design consideration, and that will be taken as a load combination. And also, combined loading also will be checked under under by by this uh, software. Everything will be done by by the software and manual uh, design also. This is how the our design practice goes. And uh, b before going further, uh, this is uh, uh, this is the basic principle um, uh, in our uh, for our anchors. That is friction. The uh, friction principle uh, works on friction between the anchor and the base material. And keying principle works on the keying uh, keying principle. That is, uh, uh, concrete will be cut as a key upon expansion. And combined friction and keying will be a combination of other two principles. Another last, last but not least is resin principle, which works on bonding uh, mechanism. So there are some different failure modes as long as anchors are concerned. Failure modes are first one is pull out. 
that is the anchor is coming out of the base material second one is pull over the that is the base mat, uh, fastening material is coming out of the anchor fasteners pull over is basically due to a larger hole or a higher clearance gap between the anchor and the base mat, uh, fastening material a third failure is concrete breakthrough breakage wherein a concrete cone is completely uh, sheared off by, uh, by this this might this might happen because of poor grade of concrete or uh, higher load which concrete cannot withstand and other failure modes are steel breakage here the steel is getting cut on shear due to shear this is some uh, typical picture and other is concrete splitting here the crack is formed in between in the in the middle in between two anchors because anchors are installed very close to each other this is called this we call it as the concrete splitting and other influencing factors uh, till now we we have seen the split uh, failures of anchors and other, there are other influencing factors we, uh, from which anchor has to be decided they are uh, load direction and base material anchor spacing and edge distance embedment depth tightening torque reinforcement uh, in the base material and temperature and corrosion these are all the factors what we feel is uh, will influence the anchor performance and uh, while designing all these factors has to be considered and um, anchor categories we have uh, three different anchor categories which I, I can show you the sample at the end of this presentation uh, mechanical anchor uh, in mechanical anchor we have uh, medium duty heavy duty and light duty anchors and we have some anchors uh, specially made for uh, some special duty anchors heavy duty anchors are uh, are applica uh, applicated in uh, uh, boilers and nuclear plants pla plants power plants and medium duty anchors are general uh, construction for utilities service fixings and all light duty anchors for um, architectural application or light supports or taking support from gypsum gypsum wall a small uh, kind of loads and all and special duty for special purpose applications coming to plastic anchors it works on completely friction principle it has a frac uh, it uh, this red color sleeve what you are seeing is the plastic sleeve and uh, the, the the friction between the plastic sleeve and the base material will be acting as a uh, resisting force for the tension or shear and lot of lot of other anchors listed down for mainly for gypsum board gypsum partition fixing if you want to take support from gypsum partition we have some anchors for that and the next is uh, resin anchors which completely works on bonding principle we have capsule system we have injection system and uh, we have sep separate uh, again here here again we have heavy duty medium duty and light duty heavy duty for uh, like boiler fixing like uh, uh, machine fixing like insert plate fixing and all uh, medium duty again comes under uh, uh, utility fixing pipe rack fixing and all and light duty again uh, for masonry fixing we can also take a support from masonry wall here is uh, this is the chemical hy70 is a chemical for uh, masonry supports these are some of the applications wherein uh, uh, first one you are seeing is a door frame fixing application the next is door frame fixing in hollow block the same anchor will be applicable for both uh, concrete and hollow block this is because of the expansion media here is here is where it is expanded and that is how the resistance act, acting actually and some other applications like bridge fixing bridge uh, rehabilitation like crash barrier fixing and insert plate fixings pipe racks cross country pipelines ladder fixing and uh, truss fixing these are some of the application wherein we can uh, influence you. and uh, uh, there is one more uh, different application called stone cladding uh, dry cladding basically cladding is basically for covering a entire building by using a granite uh, slab or acp panel for that also we have support uh, we have anchor fasteners and also we have this clamps this clamps is also from hilti only ss clamps and these two anchors are used for uh, these application and some other applications like handrail these are all light duty application as i said door frame fixing handrails and cable trays uh, in um, raised floors these are all some applications and uh, this is all about uh, anchors uh, what i can uh, talk and let me go ahead with uh, post installed rebar connection where this post installed rebar connection will be of uh, use basically uh, when you mist a dowel to take from a, a beam or column or if you want to raise a column uh, from a from a beam or from a raft there uh, where you want to fix some uh, dowels here that is where uh, chemical grouting are useful uh, in your in this picture you can see this this is the post install bar and this is the casting bar so here these two concrete are getting connected by using this concrete the, by using this rebars that is post install rebars that is what you are seeing in the picture and rebar grouting some of the applications like adding a new concrete member like uh, uh, like if you want to introduce a beam in between two columns or if you want to introduce a column on top of a raft or if you want to extend a column that kind of new uh, adding new member we have uh, there is a rebar grouting and strengthening of existing member like jacketing of the concrete or beams columns or beams and widening or thickening of raft footing pile cap for to increase the thickness of uh, slab or if you want to increase the thickness of this uh, wall 
or pile, pile cap needs to be strengthened or dimension of the concrete needs to be increased there uh, we can use a uh, jacketing system and providing shear connectors like uh, uh, the shear keys are basically to, to transfer the shear loads from one, one concrete to other I mean the old concrete to new or basically co concrete stitching shear connectors and starter, starter bars from rock so if you want to raise a foundation from a rock there is something called rock anchoring that is uh, passive rock anchoring uh, we can support uh, support taking doubles from a rock and directly we can take a foundation instead of excavating the rock and rebar theory uh, basically goes with uh, with splice and without splice with splice is basically when the rebar uh, when the new rebar is inserted in parallel to the existing rebar that we call it as splice uh, modes of failure that is uh, load transfer to to load transfer to cast in rebars via the concrete bond between them that is strut and time model uh, the new rebar will, will transfer the load will be transferred from new rebar to old rebar uh, the existing rebar but through this strutton type principle that here the modes of failure will be steel failure bond failure that is steel will cut off bond will fail and splitting because of closed spacing I mean splitting because of edge and spalling because of closed spacing these are all the four failures observed in this uh, theory and there is another theory as I said uh, rebar without splice wherein no rebar in the, uh, in the parent material to splice with. So here the modes of failure will be uh, steel failure, bond failure, splitting, spalling and uh, concrete shear, concrete uh, cone also will try to come out when there is no reinforcement in the parent material that is PCC, when you are inserting a rebar in a PCC uh, concrete shear is also expected. So these two uh, approach uh, will, will, will take us to a design and again uh, for rebarring also we have separate software for doing this say uh, this is a typical software for extending your uh, extending a slab and this is a software for this is the uh, system for uh, extending your beam with the from a column that is simply supported structure and other is cantilever structure. So here uh, the lots of uh, bending uh, bending diagram is also analyzed in the software and shear and tension also uh, analyzed and that will be uh, that will be given as a report and then uh, we can sub we can uh, uh, submit a design proposal for that. Some of the application for uh, post installation of rebars are diaphragm wall fixing, slab connections or extension of slabs, misplaced bars, vertical or horizontal connections like extending your column or beam, a wall strengthening as I said here new rebars will be fixed and the connecting uh, these rebars by using shear connectors that is concrete stitching and new slab connections, extension of slabs, some joint strengthening and cantilever balconies, most of the uh, residential application will uh, they will be interested in balcony fixings so that also we support them and slab widening in bridge application, some structural upgrade upgradations, slab strengthening and uh, side walkway upgrade and these are the shear connectors wherein uh, the, uh, the rebar will be bent as a U so that to so that the uh, proper load transfer will be ensured this is what I am saying this is U and uh, what you are saying is a br bridge deck uh, over a concrete overlay wherein uh, thickness of the um, pathway is, is increased by using the shear connectors these are all shear connectors and this is these are all main rebars and these are all shear connectors the shear connectors are inserted by using our chemical the, the depth will be decided by uh, by our technical team and uh, there are starter rebars from uh, rock as I said we need to the, if you need to uh, raise a foundation from a rock so we can insert uh, rock starter bars from rock and then you can cast a rebar cast a cast a footing so this is this is basically to avoid earth's upthrust pressure so that uh, the uh, the pressure is measured and, and uh, accordingly the depth has been calculated so that the complete pressure has been arrested by using this rebars this is, this is how this will be fixed as such and one more one of the important support that we do is uh, uh, we do site pull out testing we we have a, we don't uh, charge anything for the site pull out testing and these are all the testing uh, systems where we where this is a complete setup wherein uh, uh, you have a load cell uh, to pull the uh, rebar out and you have a pump to uh, to um, to run the fluid to run the pressure and we have a gauge to measure the uh, uh, pressure how much it withstood and at last about uh, installation system that is what uh, all about uh, post install rebar connections and, uh, and uh, last installation systems where this installation can be very much useful is to wherein uh, your uh, welded support is being avoided where a factory where uh, where a project site is uh, is avoiding welded supports there we have this kind of uh, application wherein you can take a support from uh, uh, ISMB uh, channels channel system and also from the concrete we have separate BO, uh, BOQ BOM for uh, everything this is these are beam clamps to take a support from ISMB web and pipe rings to run up pipes on top of a uh, from uh, from a ceiling and accessories like uh, uh, push button anchors and all which will transfer the loads and connections 
this connectors just to ensure the angle connectors connecting between the two this channels and the uh, horizontal and vertical channels and modular channels these are the channels that will uh, that will that is a, that these are the main members that will try take the complete loads last but not the least the hilti technical support we where we can support uh, um, a, a contractor is selection of anchors we have a separate uh, team for selecting these anchors based on the system what we discussed uh, just a while back and design of anchor arrangement for insert plate fixing etc by using the software and we have this uh, fastening technology manual and uh, literate uh, technical literature and documents uh, required up uh, required approvals for anchors will be given by us and depth calculation for post installed rebar connection by using the uh, so by using the uh, codes and codes and the testing of rebars or anchors at the site that what we discussed so why hilti because uh, you get a superior added value through a reliable partnership and creating enthusiastic customer everywhere every time now we will go to the second second half of the session uh, that is will uh, I'll, i can show you some samples of anchoring system what we have discussed uh, quite a while back um, this is the anchoring uh, system we have a uh, complete uh, uh, range of anchor fasteners this is the mechanical anchor fastener which works on uh, combination of uh, friction and keying principle uh, the, this is the nut the, this will be inside the concrete and this will be exposed to uh, it's really open to the atmosphere and upon tightening it the bottom po bottom portion will try to uh, expand and then the sleeve will act as a um, friction media the, this is how the, which transfer the load over here and upon expansion this red color sleeve plastic sleeve will break so which will indicate the anchor uh, completely expanded so we'll have to stop accordingly and then this red color uh, head will be a uh, shear off will be shearing off so as to ensure the proper torque is ensured in this anchor this anchor is one of the heavy duty anchor in our portfolio and we use this anchor for uh, uh, power plant boilers nuclear fixings nuclear uh, nuclear plant applications and all this has approval for uh, seismic zone and tensile zone and uh, uh, and cyclic loading or dynamic approvals all other approvals we have this is one of the heavy duty anchor for us this this we call it as hsl3 and one of the other uh, mechanical anchor which is very simple which is medium duty anchor this this doesn't has any complication as that anchor has like uh, expansion system this is a sleeve and this is the nut uh, making a hole the uh, concrete will be going inside upon tightening this this head will try to come out this head will try to come out and this ha this sleeve you know, this sleeve will expand and form a friction media and that is how the this uh, the anchor works basically these are all these are all mechanical expansion anchors and this is light duty or medium duty anchor this uh, this anchor is applicable for uh, for um, um, for something like uh, um, insert plate fixings uh, pipe rack fixing and all and the other anchor in form of uh, plastic anchor sir this is the plastic sleeve anchor where in this red color sleeve combined with uh, combined with a screw red color sleeve combined with a screw will form as an anchor and you can see her uh, uh, the uh, the expansion fins and all so upon upon tightening it this try, this fin try to expand and form a friction bond friction bond and th this is how this anchor works this anchor is basically for di light duty application like door frame fixing and tv tv board fixing any any sort of fixing in gypsum boards and all for that application we can use this anchor and one of the other plastic sleeve anchor one of the other plastic sleeve anchor is h um, hkd this basically it's a kind of a butterfly kind of uh, anchor hld this is hld anchor and uh, this is the uh, we have to fold this and insert uh, insert into a hole and uh, upon tightening here automatically it expands inside the gypsum partition this anchor is uh, will be very much good for cavity kind of base material like gypsum partition um, uh, gypsum partition and hollow blocks and this is a simple uh, sleeve anchor wherein any ex any external screws can be used for uh, for a, for making it expand this is basically used for uh, uh, electrical uh, plumbing application wiring application and all roll plug and next comes the uh, chemical anchor where in the sleeve this uh, capsule and this
this capsule and this um, bolt will be forming as a chemical media wherein first um, making a hole insert the chemical and then the uh, drive this anchor the drive this bolt by using a the, by using a uh, drilling machine so by driving this the um, the chemical particle inside this capsule will get mixed with this uh, thread threads and then pro, uh, form a proper bonding system wherein uh, uh, chemical bonding is ensured and then uh, load can be transferred uh, after uh, after this chemical is getting set uh, this is one of the uh, uh, one of the system of uh, one of the um, very old system of uh, chemical grouting and there is one more uh, chemical grouting system wherein uh, uh, base material is hollow this is the base material and this is the uh, anchor which is getting fixed what we will do there is a sleeve inside the thing after expanding after uh, after inserting chemical gets uh, uh, expanded and this will form as a key to uh, to avoid to come anchor to come out of the base material this works on again a keying principle this is this is mainly for uh, uh, masonry fixing brick wall for taking support from brick walls and all and at last here comes the rebarring system wherein uh, rebar uh, as, I, as I explained you post insulation of rebars that is taking a double from a existing column or a, any concrete say let us assume this is a concrete and we, we make a hole and inject the chemical later on we insert the rebar that is how the uh, uh, bonding system happen the same chemical uh, injection bonding principle only again here there are three sorts of failure I, as I explained in my presentation one is steel failure that is steel is getting cut and the other is concrete cone failure that is the major chunk of concrete is coming out and the la last is the bond failure wherein the bond alone comes out the comes out with the anchor. So these three failures will be analyzed and, uh, and will be designed accordingly. So now uh, I am going to explain you about the anchor uh, uh, how anchor uh, chemical anchor uh, mechanical anchor works basically this is the base material and making a hole and inserting an anchor. So you will have a as I said as I said you will have a sleeve inside the inside the anchor and you will have a nut here upon tightening the sleeve uh, this head will try to come out while coming out the sleeve will expand and form a chemical uh, proper uh, friction and this friction this this friction is responsible for uh, uh, for the pull uh, for the tension force applied over here and the next is this is uh, uh, mechanical anchors and the next is chemical anchors wherein uh, making a hole filling the chemical and then inserting a inserting the bolt and there is a bond between chemical and the base material and also chemical and the um, rod so that bond strength is been uh, is been uh, will decide the pull out pull out capacity of this anchor so that is how this chemical anchor works and the uh, next is post installation of rebars post installed rebars ideally when you have a column and if you want to this is a column available and if you want to take a beam outside you have a four uh, four bar, four bars to be uh, to be taken out so what we do is normally it will be drilling will be done and the uh, chemical injection will be done and then double bars will be taken out so from this double bar main main reinforcements can be tied in that is how the uh, take things happen so here what we do is uh, we analyze this uh, failure uh, modes of failure that is pull out force and all and next I was explaining about the software also profit software uh, the software basically uh, we have profits for anchors and rebars. Uh, for prof for profits anchors for anchors it is called as profits anchors and pro for rebars it is called as profits rebar and for uh, what is the difference between anchors and rebar is basically if you want to connect a uh, if you want to connect a concrete or any RC, RCC to steel you can use profits anchor and if you want to connect RCC to RCC you can use uh, profits rebar that is what is that is what the basic difference between anchoring and rebarring anchoring is all about connecting a steel member to concrete and rebarring is all about connecting RC member to RC. So here the, the concept of doubling will be coming and here the concept of insert plate fixing will be coming. 
for all the support for all for both the connections we support moment tension and shear same here moment tension shear uh, and, and shear so all this force will be uh, analyzed based on the given force we, de we decide this this dimension that is how it uh, both the thing works actually and next I was discussing about installation system basically this works on modular supports that what we have MQ channels and all the channels what we have shown here shown here is this basically a square channel C kind of channel wherein you can take a support from uh, from uh, from C channel and you can uh, run a pipe you can run a pipe pipe ring or you can suspend a pipe ring this C channel can be supported uh, from a concrete this is how this uh, normally our installation system works apart from that we can uh, we can also go ahead with uh, welded support where in the uh, where in some site will not support uh, welded uh, uh, support welded support so basically for that for where you avoid welding where in, in this case we can use this insulation systems that um, and this insulation systems can be used for, used in hvac hvac and uh, pipe uh, electrical mnd mnd and uh, lot many uh, factories like uh, for truss fixing uh, for truss bottom fixing and all for that kind of a thing we can use this modular supports uh, and this is what uh, I wanted to convey to you and with this uh, uh, yeah with this I would like to uh, conclude the uh, seminar and I would like to thank you for the opportunity given uh, for me for uh, for showcasing our company and our products and services and I am sure uh, this will help you out in your uh, uh, academic uh, career thank you. I would like to thank Mr. Vinod Kumar for the uh, nice explanation about the Hilti products available. We know that Hilti is a world leader in terms of anchors. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, what are the different materials used in the anchor systems? Like what is the type of plastic and what is the type of chemical use? Can you tell us something? Yes. Uh, in case of uh, mechanical anchor, like we do, we have this uh, galvanized uh, galvanized steel, and uh, we have this high, high corrosive resistance. All these metal material uh, material are uh, uh, MS steel only, MS steel and stainless steel. And all these MS steel will be coated with the galvanized for uh, 0.5 microns to avoid corrosion effect. And also, we have separate uh, stainless steel anchor to avoid complete corrosion for facade applications and all. Uh, this is the same applicable for all the mechanical anchors. And for plastic sleeve anchor, the sleeve uh, the, we have it's a combination of sleeve and the screw. The screw is basically made of uh, carbon steel only. It's a mild steel, uh, and uh, which has been which is again coated with a galvanized uh, galvanized coater. And the sli uh, plastic sleeve is made of polyamide uh, plastic, which is flexible, and it, this is not this is not brittle brittle, uh, be because the anchor the plastic sleeve should expand, uh, it should not break. That is how the, so. This is a, these are all polyamide plastic, and for chemical uh, we have three different uh, we have two different uh, thing. One is uh, the powdered chemical is basically metacryl. Uh, urethrin metacrylate that is a chemical name of the uh, the um, uh, capsule and all these uh, injection chemical and all will be uh, falling under two categories one is hybrid motor and other is epoxy epoxies are uh, uh, hybrid motor or vinyl esters and epoxy uh, epoxies are basically cementitious uh, grout basically which is non -sh non shrink uh, grout that is used for machine foundation and rock anchoring and all this the, this is as good as uh, concrete uh, the higher 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 grade of concrete that is what uh, this chemical is what would be the expected life of these uh, different systems that you have? Uh, all our anchors are basically uh, based on European standard. We have separate uh, standard for uh, for estimating the uh, lifetime of uh, these anchors. And as per the standard, it is estimated to be around 30 years of uh, lifetime. So the anchor, when it is passing through a 80 standard, it should uh, withstand 30 years of lifetime. So all our anchors are uh, rated for those lifetimes. And uh, do these anchors differ from one geographic location to the other because there will be climatic changes? So for India, would you have specific anchors that are uh, tailor-made for Indian conditions? Um, yes, but uh, not completely. Uh, mechanical anchors and all does not de depend dependent on temperature or uh, out external atmosphere. Um, wherein chemical anchor, the, it varies with the setting time. So uh, for uh, for uh, coldest countries and all, we need uh, anchor should not, which, which, is not, uh, sh which should not set quickly. Whereas for, for a hot country like India and all, it, it should have a higher setting time because it needs a lot of uh, temperature to for making the to for for, a, for the chemical to get gelled up. 
So that is how the uh, resin and bond mixture will be varying. Otherwise, chemical changes will not be there country to country, but the may, may, uh, proportionate mixture will change from country to country. But we have uh, these anchors specifically made for uh, Indian condition only. Sir, uh, what are the applications of this uh, cartridge system of chemical anchors and uh, capsule system of chemical anchors? Um, cartridge system, cartridge system is basically for uh, it's a it's an injection kind of chemical, wherein uh, applica it the both the thing varies with the uh, case to case. For example, uh, when the <coughs> When when you are installing an anchor on several heights, where in the cartridge you cannot you cannot expect a manpower to inject the chemical and then insert the rebar. So there, the cartridge directly goes inside and then tighten it, then anchor it. Uh, that's it. Where in uh, other applications like uh, doubling or rebarring, this concept of rebarring where where, uh, where RC2 to RC2 connection is be there. So there uh, you will have to go for injection system, uh, wherein uh, chemical has been injected and the rebar will be inserted. So ideally, both the thing will have a separate similar bond strength. Only thing is. Uh, cartridge will have a uh, will have no setting time, which means once it is installed, you can start loading. Whereas, uh, sorry, capsule system, a cartridge system will have some setting time, which means after installing after some half an hour only we, you can load it. So that also loading thing also when you want to load immediately, you can use capsule, or you have some time one or two days time after uh, after installation, you can go for uh, injection. So both the thing uh, remains the same. I mean, uh, application varies varies with the application. That is how it is. So, uh, um, so I, th I would uh, like to thank you, uh, thank one and all for uh, listening uh, uh, this presentation, and I'm sure this will be benefiting you for uh, for your uh, thing. And um, on behalf of the company, um, I would like to thank uh, Professor Ketu for uh, giving us uh, give this opportunity for uh, for showcasing our products and services. Thanks a lot again.